happy to be able to join you today for this period of Bible study. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, we find Paul discussing the second coming of Christ. And he points out that Christ will come back again. And he talks about the implications of that in regards to our coming death and our view of death. Well, then beginning in chapter 5, he continues that discussion with some additional aspects of the coming of Christ. And beginning in one verses 1 through 3, then, we find that Paul compares the coming of Christ to a thief in the night. He said, but concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. Here he says that Christ, when he comes again, will come like a thief in the night. But he calls it the day of the Lord. Now, oftentimes people think about the day of the Lord as reference to the second coming of Christ. And it can refer to that as it does here. But more often than not, it discusses a time or has reference to a day when God is coming in judgment upon the disobedient. It's used in the Old Testament several times, and that's how it's used in those times. It's not a reference to the second coming of Christ, but simply God coming in judgment upon the disobedient. And some of the most terrible pictures in the Old Testament concern the day of the Lord. Well, here Paul said the day of the Lord, of course, is a reference to the second coming of Christ. And he said that day would come as a thief in the night. Well, how does a thief come? Well, we know that a thief comes very suddenly. That is, he comes quickly and he leaves very quickly. He does not stay very long. Then, of course, he comes when we least expect him. A thief obviously sends no warning that he is coming. And then when a thief does come, it's too late for prepare then. It's too late for prepare when he is coming. Now, if the day of the Lord, the second coming of Christ, is going to be like a thief in the night, then that tells us these three same three things would be true in that regard to that day. There will be no warning. You know, Christ himself said that off that day and hour, no one knows. Matthew 25, verse 13, Jesus says, Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. Now, throughout the history, there have been multiple attempts to describe or to determine when, exactly when that day is going to be. And, of course, every single one of them has been mistaken. People have always speculated about the time, and many still do, but Christ still says no one knows the day or the time. Therefore, it's useless for us to speculate exactly when Christ is going to come. There will be no warning, and time or past experience does not mean anything. You know, sometimes people will say, well, if Christ has not come in 2,000 years, then why will he come now? Well, just because my house has never been broken into, that doesn't mean it won't happen. It could happen tonight, but I don't think it will, but it never had before, but one day it might. So just because Christ has never come in the past does not mean he will not come. Then we also see that the second coming will be like a thief in the night in the sense that we come, he comes when we least expect him. Just as a thief does not give any warning, he will try to catch you by surprise and hopefully find you when you're not even at home. Well, Christ says he will come when we're not expecting him. There will be no warning. People will be going about, going about their living their lives just like they always have. And then suddenly, Christ will appear again. And when that day does come, it will be too late to prepare. And there will be no escape. Just as it's too late to prepare for a birth of a baby once the labor pains begin, 
So when Christ comes again, it will be too late then to prepare for the second coming of Christ. Our world as we know it will cease to exist and eternity will begin. But even though we do not know when Christ is coming back again, there's no reason for the Christian to be caught unprepared and unawares. Because Paul said, beginning in verse 4, that we are sons of light. He said in verse 4, But you, brethren, are not in darkness, as that this day should overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of light and sons of that day. We are not of the night nor of the darkness. Therefore let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. Here Paul said that we are sons of light. Now darkness is symbolic of a life that's lived in disobedience to God's will. And thus light then would be the opposite of that, of course. Light identified those who try to live according to the direction of Jesus and his word. The psalmist wrote in Psalm 119 and 105, said, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my feet path. Then Jesus spoke to them again in John 8 and verse 12, and he said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. You see, Christ will come as a thief in the night, but for the Christians, there's no reason for him to come as a thief in the night because we will be prepared. Oh, we still do not know the time, but it really doesn't matter because we are prepared. It's too late to prepare for an examination once the examination paper is in front of you. It's too late to fix a leaky roof when it begins to rain. And it's too late to prepare for the coming of Christ when Christ appears. But the Christian is going to always be prepared. And since the Christian is prepared, then it will not be a terrible day of destruction but the day of the second coming of Christ will be one of great glory. You see, daylight disciples are alert. In verses 6 and 7, verse 6 we've already read, but notice in verse 6 and 7 again, he said, Therefore let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. For those who sleep sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. No, there's no reason for us to live as if it is darkness and no reason to live as it is night because it is day. It is day in the sense that we are going to be prepared for the second coming of Christ. Daylight disciples are watchful. We do not sleep, but we are watchful and are alert. What should we be alert for? Well, we be alert to the fact of the Lord's coming. Yes, Peter warns us that scoffers will deny the fact. He says that some people will say, but it's been too long, and that's we've already noticed that. Some people today are saying he will never come back again. It's been too long. But just because he's never come in the past doesn't mean he's not coming. You see, the fact of Christ's coming is to be taken seriously. Jesus said to watch and to be ready. In Matthew 24, verse 44, he said, Therefore you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. So we must be alert to the fact that Christ is coming back again at some point, but then also be alert to the power of evil. Paul said in 1 Thessalonians 5 in verse 22 to abstain from every form of evil. That means we must be self-controlled. We do not live like those in darkness. We do not live like those who do not trust in God and believe in his commandments. But we base our life on the commandments of God. Therefore, we avoid the very appearance of evil. And we avoid association with those who live in evil. We must live differently from those who walk in darkness. So we be alert to the power of evil. And then we also alert to opportunities of service. 
be awake or be watchful of the times when you can help others and you can serve God. This is what Paul points out to us in Ephesians chapter 5, beginning in verse 14. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep, arise from the dead and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Here Paul said, live like wise men in the sense that we redeem the time. Now to redeem the time is to seize the opportunity, is to use what opportunities we have in the right way. In other words, we all have the same amount of time. But obviously, we use that time in completely different ways. Sometimes we waste the time. We do nothing that's profitable. Other times, we use time very profitably. Here, Paul said that at the time that we all have, we need to make sure that we redeem the time. That is, use it wisely. The sleeper is forgetful of his duty. The one who is asleep does not remember and think about what he should be doing, but he only lives for the moment. He lives according to his own desires. But the one who is not sleeping, the watchful Christian, is alert. He's alert to what he should be doing. He's alert to using his time wisely. And so we need to be alert to the opportunities of service because you may never have the opportunity to serve someone else but one time. Therefore, be alert to those opportunities. You see, we need to focus on the promised return of Christ. When we're focused on the promised return of Christ, then that will keep our hearts and minds centered on heavenly goals. And then when our minds is centered on heavenly goals, then we are prepared for that day of Christ's coming, whenever it might be. We do not know when it be. It might be tonight, it might be tomorrow, or it might be a hundred years from now, but one day Christ will come back again. But it doesn't matter, because we're going to be prepared. Now, even though Christ does not come, even when we are still alive, we do not know when we're going to die either. In other words, we could die tonight or tomorrow. So the d death, for all practical purposes, is the same as the second coming of the Lord. So we need to be prepared for that day. So it doesn't matter whether we die or Christ comes back again. Whenever that day comes, and it will come, we can rest assured of that. But whenever that day does come, then we will be prepared and we will not be caught unawares. You see, therefore, it's really nothing to be worried about. While we know it's coming, we live as if it's going to come maybe even tonight or tomorrow. Therefore, whenever it comes, we are prepared. So it doesn't matter. That's how we need to be living our lives I hope this would encourage you to keep your mind focused on the right thing, to redeem the time that is use your time wisely and be prepared for the day of death or the day of the second coming Christ, whenever it might be. Thank you for your opportunity to speak to you today. It is God's will that you must be saved. First, listen to the Bible truth and you must believe the truth. Then you must repent from your sinful life. Then you must confess by words that the Lord Jesus Christ as the Son of God. You must be baptized for the remission of your sins. Every day our Lord added those who were being saved into his church. Be blessed by studying the word of God. To receive the Voice of Truth International Magazine and to study the Bible systematically through our English Bible Correspondent Course. Kindly write to us. Our address, Gracious Word, P.O. Box 15, Arsredi Madurai, 625016, Tamil Nadu. For more details, dial 9244204420, 9244214421. God bless you. The Church of Christ salutes you.